Hemari Rompar is preparing to host the annual Chojun to propitiate his ancestor spirits and guardian deities. This ritual and such innumerable worships are performed by priests or kurusar, who are ritual experts. Mr. Rongpar, who himself a kurusar, is performing the Chojun. Chojun is one of the most important household rituals performed by Karbis. It is mandatory for the head of a family to perform this ceremony three times in its lifetime known as Ove Isi. It is called Vopong. When the ceremony is held for the first time, it is called Vopong Kee or initiation, which is followed by Vopongke Pangbong or intermediate and Vopongke Plut or conclusion. Here the Vopongke Plut or the concluding episode of the Chojun is being solemnized at Hemari Rongpar's house. This ceremony is performed for three days. The first day is known as Pongrong Kichor. The day starts early and the rites Hemari Rongpar performs is paying obeisance to the Kurusar by offering him a bottle of wine. Mr. Rongpar, accompanied by a few men from his village, sets off to the nearby forest to collect the essential items for the rituals like Pongrong, Tarsing, Lorop, Pe Choklok, Chehe Lobor, Chorleng, Mirtaksu, Arjang, Langtung, Arhi, Chehe, Okireng, etc. On reaching the forest, all the men at the very beginning gather around a tree known as Pongrong. And Hemari, the Kurusar, offers wine and praise to his Kuru or spirits of his ritual teachers and ancestors. A bisons is paid to the tree spirit of Pongrong in its feet. After the completion of this ritual, they start cutting the tree. While some of the other men collect other essential items required for performing the ceremony. In the afternoon, they return home with a handful of the sacred items that they collected. Hemari Rongpar, with the help of his assistant priest, the Borva, and some other assistants belonging to the same Kuru or masters known as Achor Isiatum, raise the altars. By tradition, the altars must face towards the east. Each step is sacred and hence everybody involved takes utmost care as per the instructions given to them earlier.
Starting from the right, the altars are raised for the deities propitiated at Chojun, which include Kuru, the mentor, master, the supreme deity, Hempu, Mukran, Rasinja, female deity, Birthat, the sky god or god of heavens, Sar, the ancestors, Hii, deity of soil fertility, Birne, deity of fire, Sivoik, guardian deity of crops, Harata, guardian deity of crops, Arni, the sun deity, and Lamki, protective deity against all evils arising out of jealousy, hatred, etc. Soon after sunset, the host Hemari Rompar, who is the Kurusar himself, starts Sesadi, a sacred ritual which is an invocation to the deities and protective spirits ahead of the Jujun. On the day of the worship, the next morning, the priest again offers prayers to his mentor spirits or Kuru by the offering of wine and prayers. This is followed by him proceeding towards the altars. The men of the village bring the pig and tie it to a bamboo pole and the fowls in baskets for sacrifice, pledged to the deity, Pirthat. The Kurusar now starts the ritual of the worship with the help of the assistant priest or the Borvas. On the first instance, wine and dry fish are offered to the mentor spirits. After that, the sacred branch of Pongrong tree is planted at the main altar. Offerings of 34 parts of rice on the leaves of wild banana called loru and 12 other parts of rice on roll loru leaves are also made. Himadugalang, which is basically a mixture of water and grounded rice powder, is sprinkled all over the altars and prayers are offered. At the end of all these rituals, the pig and the fowls pledged to the deities are sacrificed. Meanwhile, the host, Kit and Keynes, arrive with Horhag, literally a basket of wine, which has a significant ritualistic use. It is also filled up with other ritual items brought in by invited Keynes. Habe, the traditional chief of the area and representative of the king, also arrives at the village headman's house, who comes to the venue of Chojun after a cordial traditional welcome by the headman. The ritual guest in this Chojun a Hemari's maternal uncle, the wife-giver, or Nihu, his sisters, or the Ingjir Arlo, 
his nieces from his sister's genes, the Pili and Hemari's wife's maternal uncle, or Arlosua Ong. Separate hamren, or resting sheds, are built for these ritual guests. Among all the other guests, the host's maternal uncle is considered extremely important. His resting shed is called Nihu Hamren. It is worth mentioning that maternal uncles are given a very high and respected position in Garbi society. At the end of the ceremony, pork carried in several horhags are served by the host to the ritual guests who are gifted with specially made meat division. Ogbor, a packet of pork, is presented to the Tsar or the village chief. Likewise, to the Nihu, an Ogbor, Ok Akeng, or one of the hind limbs to the Ingiers, one of the front limbs of the sacrificed pig to the Pilis, and an Ogbor to the Arluso Anihu are presented and they are given a gracious farewell by the host and his family. Long Rihabe, the king's regional representative's presence in the ceremony raises its status from to that of a social ceremony. For this Shojun, Seng Rongpar, the Habe from Umlarong Ronghan has arrived with his officials. A special resting shed is also made for them, which is called Sar Habe Ahamren. The Habe's primary responsibility is to supervise the gifting of wine to the prominent persons and proper distribution of the Wophu, Wokengbong, and Okjor. The Bertaman looks into all these tasks as per the Habe's instruction. For the ladies of social standing who come to take part in the ceremony, a special larger shed known as Kuntiri is built. The hostess, the village headman's spouse, the Basapi and the ladies accompanying the Horhag sit together in the Kunturi. The women also get the share of every honor and gifts as the men are entitled to. The villagers clean the sacrificed pig and fowls and cut them into proper pieces under the guidance of the Habe, Bertaman and the Sarte. as meat division is very carefully done for the ritual purposes. The young men and women take the responsibility of cooking and serving the food. After the food is cooked with the permission of the Habe and the Sarte, Special divisions of the meat are presented along with bottles of wine to all the influential men and women. With the offering of prayers to the Almighty, people start relishing the meal. At the end of the meal, the guests take leave from the host. When all the guests depart, the host along with the other priest bring the deities home, putting them up inside the house piously. On the third day, the host priest along with the villagers and the village headman 
performs the Hanbor Anbor Kachilang ceremony at home. In this particular ceremony, the packet of food offered to Pirthad is open to see if there is any omen. If the food is found without any insect or unwanted objects, it signifies good omen. The supreme deity worshipped during Children Festival is Pirthad or Barite or the Sinning Arnam, the God of Heaven or Sky God. At par with deities Hempu, Mukrang, and Rasinja, other deities such as Kampartok, Hii, Birne, Arni, Lamki, the Sar, or the spirits of ancestors and priests are also worshipped. Observing this tradition, one can rightly conclude that the Karbis place their ancestors at the same level of supremacy with the deities. They refer to their dead ancestors as Arnam Plangtangatum, Arni Plangtangatum, which literally means the ones who have become gods and stars. After the accomplishment of the ritual of Kebo, or the offering of food and meat at the altars of the gods. All the family members of the host perform Sarang Thok, propitiating their ancestors by offering food, meat, wine, and prayers. Hemari Rongpar also performs Sarang Thok with all his relatives propitiating their ancestors with utmost love and respect. In Chujun, a three-generation gap of ancestors is maintained and the following ancestors from the generation are propitiated, namely Pusar, Pisar, paternal great-grandparents, Ongsar, Nisar, maternal great-grandparents, Loksar, Nisar, great-grandfather's sister and a husband, Piliasar, Muasar, great-grandfather's niece and a husband, Bocheasar, Sonsiasar, clan elders, Rekasar, Toyasar, elders from the same village. The Karbi belief in Thirim or ancestor spirits springs from the idea of immortality of Karjong or soul and the belief that they continue to influence the living descendants' lives either in positive or negative ways. The Karbi soul has various forms including Parlo and Chamburukso. The Karjong turns into a Chamburukso when a person dies. While Karjong identifies with both the living and the dead, Chamburukso identifies with only the dead the Chamburukso is believed to transform into ghosts such as Thi Palangnu, and as the term suggests, this category of souls is mischievous, if not exactly harmful. Souls of persons devoured or killed by wild animals are believed to transform into Thi Palangnu, which may frighten travelers in the deep woods. A person devoured by tiger is never reborn even after Kecham or purification ritual and transforms into such a Tipalangno. Such souls are not worshipped or venerated. In Karbi belief, souls of dead persons are hailed as Arnam Kemantang, Arni Kemantang, or the ones who have become God's sons, or simply as Tirim. Whenever there is an auspicious occasion in a Karbi household, ancestor spirits are symbolically propitiated by performing Chamburukso Korkipi.
The Crow household has come to the Tehran household, seeking the hand of their daughter in marriage to their son with wine and other gifts. This function is the Pisokehan. During this Pisokehan, the betrothal ceremony at their own home of Hongkran, Chamburuksu Horkipi, to their ancestors is being performed, seeking their blessings for the prosperity and well being of the new couple. Sarmen Teron and Harmon Teron, the elder members of the family, initiate the ritual. The senior member of the household, Sarmen Teron, places on the ground a handful of small pieces of banana leaves which are equal in numbers to the ancestor spirits to be venerated where they start the invocation. The leaves thus placed must be inverted, which is a standard custom followed for the dead. The ritual is more symbolic and held rather hastily in a corner of calm, a drawing room like space leading to the kut by offering sprinkling of alcohol and burned pieces of dried fish on each leaf reciting names of the ancestors who are invoked upon to bless the occasion and not take offense. At the end of the ceremony, water is sprinkled and burned firewood is moved over the leaves when the ancestors are invoked. At Rongpar household, the Terong family arrives with all the formalities necessary for a betrothal ceremony. During this Pisokehan ceremony at Rongpar Hem, the elderly women members of the family perform Chamburukso or Kipi. What is significant is that the chant performed at Chamburukso or Kipi always invariably begins with invocation of ancestor spirits who are regarded as having become gods in traditional Karbi society. This impromptu ceremony, which is performed in a household on any given occasion, is considered significant. As the above example demonstrates, such occasion may also include the visit of relatives, friends, guests, or any ritual performance. As is evident, Chamburukso Horkipi is performed as a mark of respect to the ancestor spirits and to demonstrate that they are not forgotten. It is believed that ancestor spirits may otherwise show their displeasure and seize a person or two from amongst the gathering and the person so seized may show signs of sudden, unexplained uneasiness or suffer vertigo-like discomfort and feigns with sweating or coldness. Such a phenomena is called Chamburukso Kelem or Chamburukso Kepachoy, which is a form of spirit possession. At the occurrence of such a phenomena, Chamburukso Horkipi is immediately performed and the seized person is restored to normal. An elaborate ritual is performed by individual households. In order to propitiate ancestor spirits, which is known as Tiriam Gangduk. A household performing Tirim Gangduk believes that there are certain revelations such as rats chewing away clothes and garments, unexplained deaths of domesticated animals or familial discords, sicknesses as of bad crops etc. which are taken as indications that certain ancestor spirits are dissatisfied and are to be propitiated. Accordingly, a Sankilangabang, 
or diviner is approach who determines which and how many ancestor spirits are to be propitiated. Such ritual is limited to an individual household alone, and none of the relatives or kin members are invited. Some households perform sarang tok, which is a more elaborate ritual than dirim kangduk. At sarang tok, swine and fowls are sacrificed to propitiate ancestor spirits by offering fruits, food, meat, and wine. The performing household invites relatives and kin members to sarang tok. Generally, sarang tok is performed at jimtim, the trashing field after harvest. Few years back, Rongpar Nokkum, the Rongpar clan performed Tirim Kangduk. For Borpuritchu, the first Rongpar king and their ancestors, this ritual was performed for blessing the entire Karbi community. After every four year interval, Rek Apir Thad is performed by the people of Habibi region of Rongkang. Rek Apir Thad is a children organized by the public of a particular area. In Rek Apir Thad as well, ancestor spirits are propitiated by performing Sarang Tok for good weather conditions, good harvest, and the welfare of the people. In some circumstances, even a living person may also be a candidate for Tirim Kangduk. It is believed that certain wishes that remained unfulfilled at the time of death may be revealed in a reborn ancestor. Tirim Kangduk is performed for such a person by offering items to the ancestor reborn in the household. The predominance of ancestor spirits can be observed in the day-to-day -day religious practices of a Karbi household. A particular group of male ancestors is deified and treated as household gods or Hem Angtar, who are venerated as Kurusar or group of priests. These Kurusars may belong to any particular clan and are always males who are believed to be the initiators of the Hemangtar or household deities. It is also customary for the living Kurusar to invoke the names of Hemangtar before the beginning of any ritual performance. In the mortuary practice of the Karbis, propitiation of ancestors takes center stage. A ritual feeding of the dead is held on the third day after cremation, which is known as Anchorap when relatives carry fruits and eatables to the grave. In the Karbi community, ancestor spirits therefore attain the significance of gods. The study of ancestor spirits is therefore a vital tool to the understanding of the traditional Karbi belief system and the phenomena of ancestor worship.